हे कृष्णा इज अ डिवोटीज सफरिंग कॉस्ड बाय कृष्णा एंड नॉट बाय कर्मा आंसर दिस इज द एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट इज ऑफन गिवेन फॉर वन वर्स इन द टेंथ कैंटो अनुग्रहणा हृषि तनम शन तत्व धनम तेजत्य से स्वजन दुख दुखिता दैट ऑन होम कृष्णा है स्पेशल मर्सी कृष्णा टेक्स अवे ऑल देयर गुड ऑल द गुड थिंग्स फ्रॉम देम ऑल द मटीरियल एसेट्स फॉर देम एंड डज देट डिवोटी हैज नथिंग एंड नो वन एक्सेप्ट टर्न टू एक्सेप्ट अदर देन कृष्णा एंड डज कृष्णा टेक्स द डिवोटी टूवर्ड्स प्योर डिवोशन so this is krishna's response uh, to yudhishthir's question when he asks why they had to go through so much privations um, now this principle has to be the principle underlying this has to be very carefully understood let's begin with extremes that are to be avoided the first extreme is that krishna likes to cause suffering for us and if we become his devotees he will bring more suffering in our lives that is definitely not an understanding which the which the scriptures teach it is often vividly described how those who are distressed come to krishna like adhudruva came to krishna and he was relieved of his distress and how spiritual domains uh, have Uh, an unlimited level of happiness so it is not that krishna likes to cause suffering for his devotees and not that krishna is arbitrary in bringing suffering on devotees because if that were the principle is it that every single devotee goes through suffering and every single devotee goes suffering to the same degree not not at all <clears throat> so if we if we consider a pendulum one extreme one extreme reaction would be to think that actually this suffering if i practice bhakti krishna will bring suffering although only for my own good in the future i can understand but still i will suffer more if i become a devotee so that should not be the reaction which causes hesitation in our commitment to devotion the other extreme reaction if we consider a pendulum would be that is it that our suffering is only due to our karma that uh, that okay i must have done something in the past and because of this this particular situation is coming and krishna has nothing to do with it no that is also another extreme in the pendulum and to think that krishna has not krishna doesn't care for what we are going to going through and he just let us be subjected to the law of karma that is also an uh, uh, that is also an understanding which is not accurate so rather than trying to stick to philosophy let's try to focus more on personality and the personal interactions within that relationship so krishna is a person we are persons and krishna wants our consciousness to be directed towards him our heart to be imbued with love for him and so is the cause of our suffering our own karma or is it krishna rather than getting too caught in the cause because that is very very difficult to analyze and causes may also be at multiple levels if can focus more on the purpose rather than the cause cause refers to where something comes from purpose refers to where something takes us so with respect to say parikshit maharaj being cursed to die in 7 days what was the cause you know was the cause his the his uh, disrespectful behavior towards the sage was it the short tempered nature of the son of shami krishi shringi was it the malevolent influence of the age of kali because of which shringi got subjected to the shringi got uh, uh, corrupted was it just the uh, the particular he was on a hunting expedition so was it uh, the obsession with hunting that led to him getting separated from 
everybody else and being caught in a situation where he was terribly thirsty and hungry. So we could go into many, many causes and we can try to learn what is possible from an analysis of causality. But beyond that, to pin anything down to a particular cause is extremely difficult. So that's why what is Parishit Maharaj's reaction? He says, this is ultimately the arrangement of the Lord for detaching me from the world and for making me attached to him. But this is also Bhishma's analysis in the ninth chapter when he's talking with Yudhishthir. So the point is that Krishna's purpose is to take us closer to him, to bring us to him, to his lotus feet as quickly as possible. And for that purpose, he's ready to do whatever it takes. Now, whatever it takes doesn't mean that we will have to go through suffering. The point is that we all have certain conditionings and we all need to be purified of those conditionings. So to, to take a metaphor of a hospital, if a person is sick, should a person think that when I go to a doctor, oh, the doctor will maybe give some painful injection, uh, some injections or some painful medication or some painful surgery and therefore better let me not go to a doctor at all. Or should we think that Oh, when I go there, it's my, it's my, I got my disease and because this disease is, because of this disease, I'll have to go through some suffering and think of, so do we think of the curative process as the doctor causing us pain or do we think of the curative process as simply mechanical? I had a disease and this is the cure for the disease. For this disease, the treatment is painful. I have to go through it. Well, we might say that the, um, the reality lies in between both. Yes, there might be a painful treatment, but then if there's a doctor who's expert and experienced, then the doctor may know how to minimize the pain involved in the treatment. And more importantly, from the perspective of Krishna, he's a supreme doctor. So rather than worrying about the pain that might come, when we may go through, when we take the bhakti treatment as administered by Krishna, we can focus more on the pain that we will be relieved of by taking that treatment. That is the shift of focus that is vital. Not the pain we'll be going through, but the pain we will be relieved of if we take the bhakti treatment. And that will inspire us to stay steady, to stay focused, to stay motivated. And thus, go grow in our journey toward Krishna. So, anukulya se sankalpa pratikulya se varjanam. We accept the vision that is favorable and avoid the vision that is unfavorable. If thinking that Krishna is causing the suffering helps us feel proximity toward Krishna, then accept that understanding. Now, how might feeling that Krishna is in charge of causing the suffering make us feel proximity towards him? Well, it depends. If, say, the doctor is a person who cares for us, maybe the doctor is a person who, who is maybe our parent or our relative, and they're giving, they're doing some painful surgery, uh, sur sur painful treatment they're giving. Now, they know our pain, and their purpose is not to cause us pain. Just knowing that they know our pain and although in one sense we can say that they are causing us pain, but that is a very superficial understanding. Actually, their purpose is to cure the pain and curing the pain or curing the cause of the pain, uh, curing the disease that is causing the pain. If that involves some pain, then that they may go through. That, but it's not that they get any joy in it. It's not that they are causing any unnecessary pain at all. So, so thinking of this, that when a pain is being, in, when we are going through some pain, it may be the loss of a loved one, it may be a financial upheaval, it may be a health breakdown, it may be a relationship uh, a disruption, whatever it is. We need to see that <clears throat> Krishna is with me, that Krishna is aware of the pain that I am going through. And when we say Krishna is causing the pain, that does not mean that he is malevolent. So when we focus on the purpose, not the cause. Okay, why did I get this disease? And during this disease, why is this particular pain coming? 
that requires extensive medical analysis, medical education, and even after that, we might not be able to figure out. But if we understand that I'm in the hands of a competent doctor, then, then irrespective of what is the cause of the pain, the, cure, the purpose of it all is to cure me, is to free me from pain. So that would be one vision. Now, if that is anukul, we accept that. On the other hand, if we find that very difficult, that when we are, if, it, if we think it is Krishna who is causing the pain, then how can I pray, pray to Krishna? If our focus becomes, you know, Krishna, why is Krishna not relieving me of the pain? And if we start thinking, if we have had especially negative experiences of uh, pain in the name of discipline or pain in the name of tough love, uh, it all, you know, our view to of philosophy and spirituality is also shaped significantly by our psychology. So if somebody had very harsh parents and although they might have meant well, or they might have just used the justification that I mean well, and they had bad, behaved harshly with us, then for us, thinking of that kind of tough love and appreciating it would be difficult. So in that case, we can say, okay, this pain I'm going through is because of my karma. And Krishna is minimizing that pain for me. Krishna is giving me shelter in the form of the opportunity to absorb my consciousness in him. And thereby, he is sheltering me from the pain. And that is why in our tradition, Krishna is separated from Durga. We never depict Krishna with the Trishul, with the trident, which is subjecting us to the threefold miseries. It is Durga Devi, who is not different from Maya, who is doing that. So, so depending on how our consciousness can be best directed toward Krishna, we may see Krishna as the cause of our suffering, or we may say something else, material nature with all its complexity involving the principles of karma as the cause of suffering. And Krishna is the one who is giving us relief from the suffering. So one metaphor is just to conclude this, Krishna is the cause of suffering. We need to see it as like a doctor who is administering a painful treatment, but for a very benevolent purpose. That, if that metaphor helps us, then we can see Krishna as the cause of suffering. But the other metaphor could be, suppose a student has uh, not behaved properly, a student has not done the homework properly, and the teacher is a little tough and the teacher is going to, you know, show your hand, extend your hand and with a, with a ruler, the teacher is going to just hit, hit the child. And the mother may, while the child is going to the school, the mother may slip a thick glove on the hand of the child. So when the teacher hits, what is happening is there's a loud noise that is going to come. But because of the glove, that person is going to be protected. The hand, the child's hand is not going to be hurt. So in this metaphor, the teacher who is offering discipline is like Durga Devi. Krishna is like the mother and Krishna consciousness. The glow is the glow. So to the extent we are Krishna conscious, to that extent, the sufferings of material existence will be minimized for us. The noise will be there. But the pain will be much lesser. Madashraya katham rishta shunvanti kathayanti cha tapanti vividas tapa naitan madgata chetasaha. When our consciousness is absorbed in Krishna, then although the various distresses of material existence come, they do not afflict us to the same degree as otherwise. So, overall, the point is, or the purpose is to be Krishna conscious. And if thinking of Krishna as the cause of our suffering enhances our Krishna consciousness, that is, that is fine. But if that is difficult, then just put aside what is the cause and remember that Krishna is the relief. Krishna is the, remembering Krishna is the protector from the suffering for us. And that is how we can become absorbed in Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.